Hello everybody, welcome back to Into the Flames. We have a new map we're checking out today, but we have a special guest and that is Corey. He is the lead and only developer right now on the game. So uh, thank you very much for playing the game with me. I haven't played any uh, I haven't played any multiplayer with anybody yet. So this is going to be a real treat today. What's up? That should be a fun day. Yes, and we got a, uh, a little pond over here we can play in. That's pretty cool. So we're going to be going through some uh, Q&A questions and stuff here. Uh, before we do that, let's do a little bit of firefighting, I guess, and you can kind of talk to us along the way. But before we get into this, this game is uh, relying uh, on a Kickstarter that is going on right now. There's a link for it in the description. If you download the demo, it will be right there on the main menu and you can uh, back it there. But uh, as far as Kickstarter goes, you said that um, regardless of if it meets its goal, you are going to self, uh, you're going to take care of it yourself and you're going to yep, finish the I'll game. front the money. Um, I already have so much invested into it. And I want to see the game get finished. So I'm putting everything I got into it. So, and that's awesome because, uh, there's, there is a lot of projects out there that, uh, turn into, uh, you, you know, Hey, I don't know if I'm going to make the game because I didn't get enough money for it. And, and I don't think a lot of people today really understand the amount of budget that's required in these kind of games uh, and where they can go in the future. So uh, that's refreshing to hear. That means that you're you're in it for the long haul and uh, you're in love with the project that you have. We're just sitting here talking while the house <laughs> is on fire. No big deal. Um, okay, so I need to... You added a SCBA and I need to grab it. And then, real quick, so, overview of the trucks. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So, a lot of these models are going to be new changing. models here. They're going to look better. Um, got okay. a tanker truck over here. I'm going to be changing the wheels. Um, making it look more pretty, less blocky. Yeah. So, they don't look like uh, the, the standard steel wheels you would see out there. Like, more in line with the uh, other That's trucks. That's pretty sweet. Um, new ladder. Um, I'm actually in the process of rigging yeah, it now. That looks cool. Um, to be coming to Ooh, the nice. driving demo after the Kickstarter is finished to all the backers. Um, so there's that. Oh, nice. Um, Very cool. Another engine. I still got some more work to do. Um, front's a little too blocky for me, but uh, it's there and it's coming. So one question we are going, we always get all the time uh, when I'm, or I get all the time with this game uh, and you get it on your discord and everything else is, what will this be an open world game so it'll have multiple open worlds multiple scenarios of all different aspects of the fire service um forestry airport big city all kinds of stuff coming as you can see we are on a farm there is no water as far as i can see hydrant wise yeah no so we grab our supply line okay and we walk over to this pond nice why i'm there. walking how smooth is it <laughs> Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, so you come over to your water source. Very good. Uh-huh. And you hook in. Wow. Okay, so you said this is a uh, process known as drafting. So you're drafting off the water that's available since you don't have a hydrant. Yep. Now, we could use the pumper itself. We could use the, the water on board there, but we're not going to. We're just going to use it off of there. As it has a limited supply. Yep, lots of different things coming in, especially with the water. So I get a lot of questions with... um. If there's going to be different patterns with from the nozzle, like straight stream and fog, mm -hmm. and there will be. So okay. I got gotcha. you. See if it's unlocked. I also added gloves to the character, temporary gloves. All right, fantastic. Yeah, because uh, that was something that was missing that a lot of people wanted to see. Uh, so that door did not pry open, right? No, nope. or it did not open. Oh. Gotcha. <laughs> Ooh man. All right, so M is my mask, and okay, thank him going for it here so what with the uh, mechanics of the fire i was trying to figure it out in the last video uh what is the best way to put it out do you just want to keep it steadily on there or do you want to wave it back and forth up and down you want to make z's so the game is what you make it um okay. and it's as realistic as you want to make it um you can okay that makes sense. you can play it and uh kind of Stay in one spot if you want it, uh, the fire go out, or you can go back and forth and knock the whole room, um, kind of like at the same time. So, right. I said you can play it how you want. It's it's a game. So 
but either way will work. You've been setting up uh, ladders out here. I'm going inside. I've been inside into the flames trying to take these things out. I'll send a backup line in. There soon. we go. Very nice. Yeah, I'm putting this uh, fire out on the first floor out pretty quickly. So uh, one thing I did want to reiterate to everybody is that you are a firefighter, and if there's something uh, that's not super realistic, you definitely know about it yourself because you are a firefighter. Uh, and uh, what's your uh, main goal with bringing real firefighting to uh, to this game? So this game is not 100% simulation. Um, I'll be making it kind of like a mix. Like some things would be more in depth than others. However, uh, all right. the mechanics kind of right now, it's it's me laying the foundation for something bigger. Um, there'll be lots right. more mechanics coming um, in the future. Um, and the current mechanics will be expanded upon. And an example of this is with the venting. So... Um, I'm gonna be making it so like after you cut, like you'll make an actual hole, but like you'll have to grab a hook or an axe to knock the hole you cut into the, like actually break it away. So oh, that'll be like really that's just cool. an example. I'll be expanding upon it a lot. Um, animations will be getting better. Um, lots of things coming. Okay, yeah, I, I hear you <laughs> venting. I hear you venting. I'm I'm up here into this uh, in this room. Hey, this is so cool. I don't get to play multiplayer here <laughs> much. Yeah, I've never gotten to play multiplayer. It's cool because one person can be working on this. Although this is not extremely realistic right now. I wouldn't be a sole firefighter in the house right now, or would I? No, you wouldn't. But in Into the Flames... <laughs> um, so you also got to remember, this game is going to be played um, both solo and... Um, I'm coming up with a hook, too, for that. Oh, okay. Fire. Yeah, there's, um, a, there's a fire underneath me in this house. Wow. Yeah, I'll be okay. adjusting this. Oh, nice. Oh, the red line's still here. Yep, I see it. Oops, my bad. There we go. So now I got our, we got some help up here. He's been uh, ventilating the uh, the roof there. So how does that work, basically, the the, uh, the venting? So you just want to make one, one small cut into the roof? So normally in real life, you would vent above the fire. Um, it adds visibility. Uh, takes heat off the guys operating inside. Right. Um, the mechanic in this, it removes some of the smoke, but however, because it's a game and there's a trade-off and everything else, um, it gives more oxygen to the fire, so um, you, uh, the fire actually gets a bit harder. Okay, that makes out. sense. But it so gives you more visibility. Explain the uh, the mechanics of the fire, how that works. Like, is it is it a cube? Like a three-dimensional cube, and then you're it's taking like the value of the water hitting it. Uh, the fire has a couple different um, boxes on it that interact mm -hmm. with each other, um, and they spread. So it's a, in the final game right now. It's set a hundred percent chance all the time, like it's going to spread because it's okay. A I got gotcha. you. Yeah, kind of get it. But basically, the fire a spread by chance. So every time you go to this house fire, it'd be different each time, which is kind of cool. Um, that is cool. And, and to note on that is you could go to like a house fire and there could be no fire. Like just like real life, false calls all the time. So you actually have to investigate, oh, okay. look in the attic and stuff, make sure there's no fire. Yeah, um, there's still a fire down here on this in this room. I don't know which room this is, but on the on the main floor. Just found that. So the V key uh knocks the uh, camera back and forth and then you hold it, you get your inside view. We already know that, so um, oh, look, we can right. see each other in the smoke yeah. with lights. <laughs> that is so cool. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to come over here and look. Yeah, so you, the flashlight's something new you added, right? Like a full beam to it um, soon-ish. Oh, that'll be nice. Hoses all right, like everywhere. I think it's we've got it for the most part. Now, so all we need to do is pretty much ventilate and uh, use the fan? Yep. So I am going to update this so the fire's hard to put out. Um, I don't know why it's so easy on this level, but um, I'll look into it. it definitely was over kind of quick. But something you also got to consider is even though these, well, for the closed scenarios or whatever, um, is after this call, you'll be moving on to another call. You know what I mean? So Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Hundreds. Oh, that's cool. And I do mean hundreds, like throughout the open world. Um, the system nice. I designed, I can easily set it up. Like I can have a new like house fire set up. 
within like 10 minutes, like placing everything and like having it like victims and everything spawn. Um, so the whole map would be completely filled with all kinds of stuff. Not every building, obviously, but the, the, it's going to be a lot. I got gotcha. you. So uh, with the uh, roof, uh, doing the roof here, I see you've cut out about one, two, three, four holes f for a size of this building. Uh, that, that would be pretty adequate for what you would want to do. And do you um, do that before you go in and fight the, the flames or you do that um, towards the end? So in real life, ventilation kind of works coincide with the with water being placed on a fire. Why you're doing it? Okay, I got gotcha. you. So normally when you vent, you want your hole to be above the fire around the fire location. If right. I vented on the other side of the attic and the fire was... This isn't in game yet, but it will be eventually. Okay. Um, if in real life, if I vented on the other side of the attic away from the fire, you would actually pull the fire. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes sense. That's cool. So you, you said flashing. What is flashing exactly? Pretty much in a room reach their point of combustion at the same time and everything appears to erupt in flames. So I gotcha. So that's something that you do want to add is uh, flashing into the game. Yep. It'd be coming eventually. Like I said, I laid the foundations. Okay, so this is the part of war, of the fire that we yep you put the fan in, and then it uh, just pulls all that smoke out of there, and we're pretty much good to go on that. It also oh, nice. won't be instantly. Eventually, too, it kind of clears it off. Yeah, but you know what? Like when I play single player, that would have taken me a lot longer than that took. Being able to yeah, both yeah, attack yeah. at the same time, that's cool. I'll be adjusting it too to where more players would be harder. Also, something funny I want to show you is with this door, mm -hmm. how it's set up. It absolutely explodes when you hit it. Which door? That one? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the sledgehammer? Or that's the axe? This is just the axe. It's just a thing. Oh, I wanted that's to cool. It, but by a popular request, I didn't. So just so people know, this building can be on fire, too. If you kind of like oh, okay. the map and stuff. So. Yeah, so you're, you're making it to where... You eventually you're going to have it to where it just randomizes where the fire goes completely. Well, it does that now in this little thing, but yeah. Okay. I got you. Nice. Too close to the wall. So. You got it. So there are a lot of placeholders in the game, uh, especially with the uh, graphics on the uh, little rotary wheel you get when you're at the side of a truck. So those are placeholders. Those are not a final thing. Um, and I know you got some clip art fire truck there and some other stuff as well. And uh, that's the that's the process of being in in, uh, in what would you state this? What is the state of game you're in right now? You're, you're in pre alpha alpha. Be uh, I'll be happy to call it alpha when I have the open world mechanics done and the first open world out. I can probably move okay. into alpha. Here, watch this uh, gauge, this water gauge over here. Okay. It goes down. Oh, the and one on the side of the truck. Yep. Fully interactable. Hold on. Hopefully. It's it's I see like rainbow lights right now. Yeah. Hard to see. Oh there it goes. Yep, I see it going down. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. So like I know we go down faster and once it's out, it like it'll notify you. And when it's out, it'll start blinking red and then it'll go out completely. Um, that is cool. And now it's flashing at us, so, so it is out. Just like that. We'll actually hook and, into the other engine. And you're gonna pull it off of that? see the light bar of this engine go down as the water gets pulled from one engine to the other okay i got you oh yep i see it now we have yellow over here and it's going up and we have green over here yep we got green that is pretty darn cool and okay I so <laughs> so you can daisy chain pretty much everything you need to here right yep. um so the other trucks aren't interactable really at the moment right. but you'd be able to like go from one truck to the other i got you and um Let's say you don't have any ponds available. Mm -hmm. um, you take your tanker truck, which will have a lot more water than your other trucks, and you go fill them up at a at a draft site or a hydrant site, and then you come back and give everybody else water again. And the cool thing about this is with multiplayer, you can um, like set up a tanker operation to where like one player is always constantly going to get more water and dump it into the other players. So, okay. That is pretty cool. So how many people can uh, can be on a map at the same time in multiplayer? I don't have a set number yet. I have to test it. Um, okay. More than four. I'm aiming for way more than four. Ideally, I would love 12, 12 or more, um, but definitely more than four. 
Um, I'm going to start increasing the player counts and do more player tests soon. Um, once I have the basic open world put together, because there's not really a sense for six players on this map. So yeah, that makes sense. Unless I have like everything going off at once. All right. So we're back at the and warehouse. Uh, this time you notice that it is nighttime. It's no longer during the day and you move the, uh, ladder over here a little closer now. Very nice. Very nice. You kind of floating to me. Is there a button for the flashlight? Or is it always on? It's always on. Okay, gotcha. I'll be changing in the future. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook this thing up, and we can get started on that. And you can get the Q&A questions uh, all ready to go. All right. Uh, hook it up to there. I have a bunch ready. Okay. So uh, another thing is I'm going to grab the hydrant tool. So uh, what there's, there's the whole operation or there's the flushing is that something you want to add or you think that's yes. pretty mundane? Yes. Um, it would be quicker than like, I mean, in real life, it's actually pretty quick. Normally, like when you open a hydrant, rusty water, come out, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you wait till it gets clear and then you shut it off. Um, I'll be doing right. that in the future. Okay. Um, I, I think gotcha. it'd be cool. Yeah, no, that'd be really cool. All right. That's all hooked up there and um, we're ready to go into the flames. All right. There so doors now, they all have a chance to be locked or unlocked. So try before you pry people. Yep, try before you pry. Oh. Is that one closed? It is open. Oh, it's open. Nice. And you did add the ability to close the door after we go in there now, so we don't uh, feel the fire. And that was uh, after hearing some uh, requests from the people in the, the comment section. So people like you are improving the game. Don't forget your pack. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm going to kill myself, aren't I? If I, if I continue to go in there. <laughs> That's a new mechanic you added because before you just hit the M key and it would do it. When you hit the M key when you're out here, you don't get anything until you have it on. So that makes sense. All right, fantastic. All right, so let's go ahead and start the Q&A process. All right, so first and foremost, the bigger question we already answered. Um, yes. Which is open world and driving. Yes, it's coming. Um, next question. Um, well, actually, real quick, back to the driving. Is yes. there'll be a driving shown off hopefully next week by some of the youtubers mm -hmm. um including jeff i'll be sending him the video or the build with driving um next up is it coming to consoles i get that question a lot too yeah um i wanted to i'm optimizing it too and i'm working on getting dev kits so it's at that stage right now i haven't actually started developing for the consoles but um if i can get an xbox one and a playstation 4 dev kit it'll be coming Fantastic. Um, next question that I have is I saw would I like a fire department connection on some of the buildings which for the non firefighting people that is for the hydrant systems um, you have dry and wet in buildings it's called um, dry systems on bigger buildings a lot of the times that don't have their own um, pressure system right. the fire department kind of comes in hooks up their supply line well, not a supply line, but hooks up a line to the fire department connection and pretty much feeds water into the building to power the sprinklers. Nice. Um, yes. Yes, I plan on doing that now. Um, it's a good suggestion. Um, speaking of this map, cutting on the glass up top, I plan on making it breakable with a hook instead of cutting it because it doesn't really make sense. But right. whole process of game development and improving. Um, victims, yes, they're coming. Um, they're actually almost done. Um, I wanted to have them out already, but um, I ran into like a small replication issue with the multiplayer that I fixed already. Um, so I'll be putting okay. them in shortly. Um, flashovers we already talked about. Backdrafts yep. I'm unsure about. Um, read something uh, asking if collapsible buildings could come in. Um, I already have like some of the physics prototype from a long time ago. Um, unsure if I'll actually do them, but just know it was worked on a little bit. Um, okay. I think it'd be pretty cool um, to have floor collapses and stuff, like fire weaken the floor. Yeah, that'd be pretty. That'd be sweet because you would have to make sure that you have to watch where you're walking, for sure. If you're on a second floor. Yep. If I brought that, I would actually add a sounding mechanic, which for the non-firefighters is where you take your tool and kind of like hit on the floor to get like a feel of how sturdy mm -hmm. it is. Um, I would add that, um, 
I think it'd be kind of cool to have different sounds based on the health of the floor. Right. Um, hear it creak a little bit more, maybe like just make it feel not sturdy. Um, let's see. Next question: EMS and police. Police is a definite no for me. Okay. Um, for now, there's no plans for it as of now. Um, could it change in a long, 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 long time from now? Maybe. Um, but as of right now, it's it's kind of like a definite no at this point. Yeah. Um, EMS. I think um, I saw you over. Yeah, I see you over there. I see your light come through the. There you are over there. Yep. Nice. All right, continue. Sorry about that. I got excited. Yeah, good. Uh, um, EMS. Um, initially, there'll be EMS callouts in the fact that you'll like assist EMS, maybe helping them uh, with lift assist or something, bringing a like patient down. Right. Um, nothing hugely EMS at this um, at this point, um, like standalone. However, right. your, your main goal is to work on firefighting. It's your passion and what you do in real life. And hence the name Into the Flames. Yes. EMS, though, it's not like 100% out of the question because once the game's finished, um, maybe. Um, it'd be its own separate kind of thing, though. Maybe it, it could be incorporated in the game, but it would most likely come in the form of like an expansion or something because it, it's like a it's a game in itself, really. Yeah. Um, with the mechanics. Um, but it's we're not rolling it out. To talk about at the beginning of the video about being a solo dev um mm -hmm. just because i had a lot of questions with that too is i have three other teammates technically um one solely mixed animations he i i ask him to do an animation and within like a day or two he gives it to me um i put it in the game i code it in everything else but he makes them um i have a guy devoted to the hose he's contracted for it that's what he does he does a pretty good job with it uh, it's still work in progress. A lot left to do. Um, and then the other one is my level designer's back. I made this level myself. He made it nighttime and adjusted like lights and stuff. So they're asking about different callouts and stuff, new emergencies. Um, yeah. And if it's only going to be firefighting, um, no. Um, you'll have different aspects um, between like CO alarms, which is carbon monoxide, um, natural gas leaks and stuff. And you actually have meters and stuff and have to read it. Um, you'll get like the parts per million for CO and uh, you can use your fan to kind of air out the residents and stuff um, for natural gas you'll like kind of like find out where the leaks coming from could be a stove could be something you can shut off gas to the house mm -hmm. um, blow it out too um, I would like water emergencies eventually too I think that'd be pretty cool like um, cars like stuck in water you have to go in the water and like rescue the victims and stuff um, boat emergencies I would love to um, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a while before those come because it's like its own separate thing too. Kind of, it's not like an expansion, right. but it's like it's a lot of work to get physics, boat physics and stuff. Um, hazmat incidents, fire alarms, which with so with fire alarms, just like real life, the majority of the time it could be nothing. So yeah. it's still best to check out the whole building, figure out um, what alarms going off. I'll, I want to set up like a panel. So like in real life, you can kind of read it. I'm going to choose a map too, if you're ready. Next question. I'd like to see where your IC command and direct firefighting incoming units to fires. Um, I will have command vehicles in it. Um, mm -hmm. most of the, it's going to be pretty much up to the players to role play that if they'd like to, but I'm going to leave it in like, like leave it as an option. Um, next question was, is there going to be like a solo campaign? Um, in the long run, after multiplayer is done and open world is done, I would like to design kind of like a command, uh, a campaign of you going through the ranks, starting from like Pro V all the way up to Chief of the Department. Um, and something cool that I haven't seen any other firefighting game do is um, as you become like the Chief of the Part, like every new role you become, you get new responsibilities. Okay. Um, so like eventually when you're chief of the department, like I would actually like you kind of like have some financial responsibilities to do, mm -hmm. um, like admin duties and stuff, um, run scenes, direct firefighters and stuff. I mean, this is all like kind of like me just talking right now, you know, yeah. things could change, but I definitely, I would love to do it. Like I said, I want to make this like, I would like this to be like the ultimate firefighting package. Like it has a little bit of everything in it. So something for everyone. Um, Next question. What did I see? I saw. Uh, will there be split screen? Uh, probably not. 
I would like it, but I would have to test it with performance. Um, SCBA beeping, yep, it'd be coming past alarms and stuff eventually. Uh, can puddles be formed? Probably not. Um, I think it'd be kind of cool, but it. Uh, it's, I'm trying to keep the game performance friendly. Right, and um, that's that's been your biggest thing is to keep uh, things pretty much uh, as high uh, frame per second as possible. Smooth experience is best experience. Right, exactly. So, and that was something that you were talking about with me was the reason, like you know, you you don't want to go so far into making the fires so detailed to where they eat your uh, your performance up alive. So, you have to make a trade off between those two things of having like a uh, middle of the road fire uh, in physics, and then so you can work on the outside world uh, and so on and so forth. Oh man, this is going to be an interesting one. This is really smoky right here. I think this door's locked. Yeah, the front oh, yeah. door is the front door is not locked. I already checked it. The front door, and I'll. Uh, yep. I tried it before I pried it. I'm gonna go in the front door. You can go in the side. In the right? garage. Okay. Yep. I gotta. I gotta get tool. So um, in this kind of scenario, of that, I would go in and close the door, right? Or would you fight the fire back and then close the door? Oh, uh, with door opening and closing. Uh, when you initially like force a door and the line's not ready, you yep. would want to close it to kind of like prevent the fire from getting any more oxygen and feeding it. Right. I um, gotcha. Like that. But uh, like like especially like breaking windows and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, you would want to prevent. Like I'm a, I'm against breaking windows unless I'm like making an egress or something because you can't unbreak a window. And if if something were to happen where you needed that window closed or something per se, like I know like most apartments would be like, oh no. But like if for some <laughs> reason you were losing the house and you needed to close a window or something, you can never unclose that. You can never unbreak the window. Right. That makes sense. So, however, the other thing is once you're like in a door, like you're advancing the line, you never close the door behind you like that. <laughs> yeah. Because. So like if you get lost or something, you wouldn't and you like you're kinda like feeling around. You're like, what? Why is the door closed? And sometimes there's been some fires where people have closed doors and not been able to get them open again. Oh man. So, so basically and that's the thing about this game that you, you can play it as realistically as you want or as arcade as you want, and you're you're going for that middle of the road of experience. You or, or kind of experience for people, so somebody that may not know anything about firefighting like myself doesn't have such a hard time grasping the terminology and and the proper ways to do it it won't kill you immediately but do you do you want to have like a uh like i think something cool would be have you know like a, a, a difficulty uh in the game like simulation compared to uh something a little bit more easier for people yep and uh, an example of that is uh, my pumping so I want to add semi-realistic pumping um, to where you actually have to uh, put the truck in, park, like hit your parking brake, go into neutral, mm -hmm. engage pump, and then go back into drive, which I know this is probably like foreign to you, what I'm talking about right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm sure I'm doing everything wrong, too, as far as helping you out fight this fire. Um, I see that you're, you you do the crouching technique. That's something I did learn from uh, one of the comments on YouTube. Somebody said that you should be crouching so you can see underneath the smoke. So, is that something you want to do is make it a lot like certain fires have a little bit more uh, thicker smoke on the top? Yeah, visibility. I definitely want to limit visibility. So something with that comment, too, I've seen. Um, I don't crouch for a majority of the fires that I'm in because... A lot of fires you can see in, a lot you can't. Right. I mean, I'm just saying, like, if you have visibility, normally you don't get down. Like, if you can, like, if it's like a haze or something like that, um, a fire like this, you would have no visibility in, realistically speaking. So you probably would be lower. Right. Um, on top of that, with the thermal balance and everything else, if you're staying lower, um, there's less heat you're going to be experiencing, which is good because you don't want to destroy you. all your gear and everything else by a fire. But. See, normally you don't crouch or get down. Okay, that's just me. I got you. I'm yeah. sure. I know there are departments with like SAPs and stuff. And this is a pike pole I have right now. Is that what it's called, a pike pole? I think yep, that's what you learn from said. comments. Your angry comments. Yeah, I, I do learn from the angry comments. That, and I won't ever call a halogen a halogen again. So I'm going to be adding uh, tool skins too eventually too, kind of like customization. 
um, which I think would be I think a lot of people would like too. So you can kind of like personalize the game to your like taste, and people can actually have like theme fire departments. So like with the different um, truck customization rims, you could have like a black and red truck. You can make your axe kind of like in the same theme. Mm-hmm. So there, there's gonna be a lot coming for that. All right, so you want me to pop any of these in here? I don't know if there's any Open fire up there. So do you you just knock one out and then look and see if the fire's there? If not, then, then you, it'll move on your way. Pretty much. Yeah, in real life, um, pretty much when you pull ceiling and stuff with the attic fire, um, mm-hmm. as you're pulling ceiling, you look for um, evidence of fire, soot, burn marks, stuff like that. Right. Um, if the area is completely clean, normally you move on to like a different part of the house or something, you know what I mean? So, but generally when you start, like if you have a really good attic fire going, normally you want to pull all the ceiling you can in the room or whatever. I got you. So. Very nice. Yeah, I move it around really quick too. (laughs) Yeah, you're doing, doing good. I'm going to knock that down. See if there's, yeah, there's fire up there. There it is. In camera eventually too, kind of like, and it'd be pretty cool. Show hot spots and stuff. Yeah, like a flare camera. Is that what you use? There we go. We call it the tick. The tick. That's what it is. Thermal imaging camera. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, makes sense. The game's come a long way, and I can't wait to like really, really get to play it. Like, like when I'm done developing, sit down and play. It's a lot of fun in multiplayer. A lot of fun in multiplayer. All right. And I think that's pretty much that. I don't see any more. I hear flames, but I think that might just be a bug. Yeah, it's just a bug. A bug. bug Yeah. Gotcha. All right, cool. I I got that. I love playing my game. It makes me so. (laughs) Makes me happy (laughs) that I made this because it's fun for me to play. And that's like. Yeah. No, that's what it's all about, man. And yeah, I can definitely see. After playing so much uh, single players, I've been playing, like the multiplayer aspect of it, man, you can really knock uh, a house fire out like nothing. And just think about like, like the biggest thing I can't wait for the open world is like when you're driving that truck and you just see that smoke column in the distance. You mm-hmm. know you're going to a fire, and like you got all your friends, they're coming in the engine from a different direction. Right. And it's it's gonna be a lot. Like I can't, I really can't wait to show that off and to play it myself. Um, something cool also I'd like to add in with venting one day is uh, so with shopping centers and stuff we do something called a trench cut uh-huh. which is like it's where you it's not like a small hole you actually cut like a full trench from one side of the roof to the other and it actually like it's almost like a fire break it kind of like stops the fire from running the whole roof line oh, okay that's cool so I think that'd be pretty cool to add eventually well there'll be like skyscrapers and stuff yep I would actually love to pull up to like a building in game and see like that 20th floor just fire blown out a window. I think that'd be like so cool. So it'd be coming eventually. Take the elevator up or the stairs, whatever you want to do. Um, so deck guns, monitors, slash master streams will be available to use. Tip of the ladder, tip of the tower stuff. Um, nice. Pump pressures. And I'm going to grab the axe this time. I'm going to have a little fun here with the door. So we got Actually, a fire in this barn. Let me try before I pry. Oh, that one opens. These do not, so. Boom! <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna close it's that. Satisfying. Yeah, no, it is. I'm gonna close this door and then we can attack it from the left side. Let's do that. And I will grab a hose as well. So, it, can I grab a hose off the same truck as you? Yep, there's two lines off the back. Beautiful. So, that's two per. Yep truck okay gotcha. truck. yeah eventually i think i'm gonna have three per truck i believe um okay but there'll be different size lines and stuff i'm gonna bumper line and stuff um gotcha but there's so much stuff coming I like i make a lot of product yeah this fire is not that big so yeah the biggest thing is that um if you guys want to see this game succeed uh and become um you know something spectacular in a shorter amount of time uh, be sure to check out the Kickstarter and uh, help him get to his uh, his goal. Uh, otherwise, it's back for you, and you are going to fund the game yourself. And when it gets done, it gets done for the most part. But 
Yep, and also don't look at it as donating. You're pretty much pre-purchasing your copy on Steam because it's still releasing at the same time regardless. Okay, um, I got you. Um, I'm aiming for late April, May release, but the Steam page says May 26, I believe. Are you going to get the game early if you are a backer? Yep, you'll get it probably like... Uh, I'm aiming to have it to backers mid-March to mid-April, so you'll get it really early. On top of that, if you back, you get a driving demo as soon as the Kickstarter's over. Yeah, so I'm not uh, I'm not being paid by you or anything like that. This is uh, not a sponsored video. Uh, Corey just uh, decided to play uh, some multiplayer with me, and I, I've been asking him some questions on Discord about the game and its future, and uh, that's the whole idea behind the Q&A session that we had with uh, your questions that you guys put up. So... This is uh, this is awesome to see a single developer, and I know how difficult it is in this day and age uh, to be a single developer and to uh, to get get something done. But you you decided to make this game just because you wanted a fun firefighting game uh, yourself, and look how far it's come. I, I think you should definitely be proud of what you got here. And on top of that, every Kickstarter dollar is going directly back into the game. I'm not taking a single cent. So. There's that, too. So. Absolutely. And once again, if you love the game, you want to see it prosper, feel free to pre-purchase your copy on Kickstarter. Uh, there you and go. And even if you get the $15 one, you still get the driving demo, which is like, pretty cool. Yeah. So. No, that would be that'd be cool. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to driving these things and actually uh, having an open world to, to play around with. That's going to be a lot of fun. So I plan on uh, continuing... Uh, making videos uh, on this game as we, as it progresses, and you've been just constantly uh, working on bug fixes and just all sorts of stuff. And um, you guys can go over to his Discord. That's all linked in the description below. Uh, you can go over there and watch the development of the game uh, and be a part of the community. But I want to say a big thank you to you, Corey, for uh, for playing some multiplayer. I haven't got to play any multiplayer yet, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. So thank you very much for that, man. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yep, not a problem at all. Well, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Into the Flames. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you have any questions for Corey, you can leave those in the comments below. And uh, he's been pretty active on answering those if we didn't get to your question. But that'll do it. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.